Hello programmers, Dan McElroy here. An array is a group of items, all of which must be the same data type. For example, we can have an array of strings, or an array of integers, or an array of doubles. We can even have an array of objects in object-oriented programming with Visual Basic. An array of integers is being declared by placing the parentheses after a data type name. We can initialize an array when it is declared by placing the data inside a set of curly braces with each piece of data separated by a comma. Because the size of the array is not declared inside the parentheses, the size of the array is determined by the number of elements inside the curly braces. The position in an array is called the index, also known as a subscript. The first index value of an array is 0. In this example, there are 6 elements in the array. The index values go from 0 to 5. It is most common to start counting from 0 because the first index position in an array starts with 0. This may be confusing for most Americans who count the ground floors the first floor, but the rest of the world counts the first floor as the floor above ground. An array can be declared as a collection of any data type. In this example, an array of strings is declared. Look at the index position for January. It is 0. If you want to start counting from 1 instead of 0, the easiest thing to do is just ignore the first position in an array. In this example, index position 0 is set to an empty string. Position 0 won't be used. This is being done so that January will be in index position 1, February in index position 2, etc. Data can be placed in array elements using the equals assignment operator. The first piece of code here is dim scores, open parentheses, 5, close parentheses, as integer. Give the name of the array and the index value inside the parentheses and then use the assignment operator equals to select the value to be placed in the array element. Data can be retrieved from an array element by giving the name of the array and the index value inside a set of parentheses. The variable quiz1 is going to receive a 92 from the first element in the scores array. I'm using the variable name selection as the index in the array. Selection is initialized to a 2. Scores sub selection retrieves the value 79 from the array. By using selection plus 2 as the index, scores sub selection plus 2 retrieves 100 from the array because selection plus 2 is equal to 4. How about this? Here is a for loop that is used to step through an array to compute the average of all the scores. The for loop starts the index at 0 and goes up to length minus 1 because the length of the array is 6, but the last index value is 5. Total is initialized to 0 before the loop starts. We don't want to set total to 0 inside the loop, otherwise it will keep resetting to 0 and end up setting total to the last score instead of the sum of all scores. The plus equal operator adds the score read from the array into the current value in total. The same thing could be accomplished by total equal total plus scores sub i. The size of the array can also be declared by setting a number inside the parentheses. Visual Basic automatically sets array elements to zero for numeric data types such as integer or double or empty strings if the array is declared as an array of type string. Unlike many other languages, the value inside the parentheses identifies the ending index value, not the size of the array. There are six elements in this array because the value inside the parentheses is a five. I always need to remember this when programming in Visual Basic. An even better way to set the size of an array when it is declared is to use a constant. The advantage of using a constant is that it can be used at other places in the program. In this example, if score count ever is set to a different value, it will be changed in every location that it is used. What would happen if you just used a number 6 for the array size in one place and forgot to change them all? 
or even worse, if you decided to change the size of the array to 8 and used a global change from 6 to 8, this would cause 60 to be changed to 80 in another part of the program. Even values like 76 would be changed to 78. Global find and replace is very useful, but be careful and don't just do a replace all unless you are very sure of what is getting updated. Visual Basic has two functions that work with arrays that can be used to determine the lower and upper index values. L bound is the lower value, typically a zero. U bound is the upper limit for the index values, typically the length of the array minus one. Using the L bound and U bound values make it a little easier when writing a for loop. The code in the for loop steps from zero to five, adding a total of all the values in the scores array. When the for loop is complete, the average is computed using the total divided by the number of elements in the array specified by scores.length. There are two ways to resize an existing array in Visual Basic. All the data is lost in the first example, but data is saved in the second example. Another way to resize the array and retain the original values is to use the resize function that belongs to the array class. Array dot resize, open parentheses, array name, comma, new size, close parentheses. The array class also has a function that is used to clear a section of an array. Array dot clear, open parentheses, array name, comma, start index, comma, number of elements. In this code, array dot clear, open parentheses, scores, comma, one, comma, three, close parentheses, starts at index position one and clears three elements and yet another function that belongs to the array class. Array.sort, open parentheses, array name, close parentheses, sorts the array in ascending order. Although there is not a specific array class function to sort in reverse order, the array class does have a function named reverse that can be used after the sort so that the resulting values will be sorted in reverse order. The reverse function can be used at any time within an array, not just after the sort function is called. Arrays can have up to 32 dimensions. However, I have never seen more than three dimensions used in a program. So far in the discussion, we have only covered single dimensional arrays. Here is a single dimensional array that has five elements. It is being used to hold five quiz scores for a single student. Although the diagram shows numbers in the array, the dim statement did not place those values in the array. The array can be loaded with values when the program is run. Here is an example of a two-dimensional array with nine rows of five columns in each row. The dim statement declares the array, dim, class scores, open parentheses, eight comma four, close parentheses. The first number in the parentheses identifies the row and the second number identifies the column. The dim value as integer declares an integer. The assignment part of the statement equals class scores open parentheses seven comma two close parentheses retrieves the value from row seven column two. Wow, here's a three dimensional array with three classes of nine students each with five quiz scores for each student. Dim, class scores, open parentheses, two comma eight comma four, close parentheses, as integer declares a three-dimensional array that is initialized to all zeros. The diagram in this example shows numbers in the array. They would need to be placed in the array by the program when it is running. The dim, class scores, open parentheses, comma, close parentheses, does not have any numbers inside the parentheses because the size of the array is going to be determined by the initializer values inside the curly braces. This is called implicit sizing. There is a set of curly braces for the entire array, and there are groups of curly braces and values for each row. Commas are used to separate the values and a comma is placed after the closing curly brace for a row when another row is going to be defined. 
Sometimes it is easier to use multiple lines in Visual Basic when lines are long or defining a multi-dimensional array. What is most important is to make sure that you place the curly braces and commas in the correct locations. Remember that an open-close curly brace pair is needed for the entire array and open-close curly braces pairs are needed for each row. Commas are needed to separate the values and commas are needed to separate the rows themselves. Nested for loops can be used to move through a multi-dimensional array. You can either step by column or row. Just remember that the row is the first index and the column is the second index when selecting a cell in a two-dimensional array. Here is an example of program code that determines the average of all scores for the entire array. The outer for loop is selecting a row and the inner for loop is adding each score on a row to the total. When the outer for loop finishes, the average is computed by taking the total and dividing it by the number of students. The program could be modified to compute the average for each student and the average for the entire class. In this case, two different variables for total would be needed. One variable for the class total and another variable to hold the total of scores for each individual student. Inside the outer for loop, the student total is set to zero. Inside the inner for loop, add scores from the array to the student total and the class total. When the inner for loop ends, compute and display the total for the individual student. When the outer for loop ends, the class average can then be displayed as is currently being shown in the code. This is the end of the Introduction to Visual Basic Arrays presentation. More information on VB Arrays can be found either online, the textbook, or another presentation for these topics. Arrays and functions or subroutines, parallel arrays, arrays of objects, dynamic arrays, jagged arrays. Enjoy working with Visual Basic Arrays. See you later. Bye.